One question I've seen pop up a lot of times inside of the Generate Press and Generate Blocks community is being able to set more of a magazine style layout for your blog post or your custom post type. And with the query loop block, this is actually really easy to do. You just gotta know the little trick to get the different styles for different posts. So what we're gonna do in this video is recreate this type of layout where you can see we have a nice featured post on one side and then other posts next to it. We're gonna do this by using multiple query loop blocks and setting some different parameters to make it all work. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, stick around and let's go ahead and get started. All right, so what I got here is just a little demo site. I've already gone ahead and set up some posts and I'm just gonna be locally scoping all the styles here. It's not part of a bigger project, but obviously as you see me fiddling with font sizes and stuff like that, you'd want to set all that up inside the customizer or somewhere more globally. But just for the purposes of this demo, we'll just scope everything locally here. And we're gonna call this the blog and we'll go ahead and drop in a container for the main section here. Since this other example had a black background, we'll do the same. We'll add an inner container and I have some global styles set up to give us some spacing. So the first thing we need across the top is a big headline that says the blog. And we'll go in here and start fiddling with it a bit. So we'll change the text to white. We'll get in here into the typography. We're gonna transform this uppercase. We might even go with black to make it very bold. And then we need something huge. So let's say maybe 200 pixels, 250. It doesn't have to be exact. The design is really not the huge focus of this tutorial, but that will get us by there. Now we definitely want some space in between it and our query loops below. So I'm just gonna make sure here that on the spacing, I have some kind of margin beneath it. Right now it's just set to 16, which is my default. I'm gonna change that to 40 just to give us a little bit more space. So the first thing we need to set up here is this two column grid. So I'm just gonna use the grid block with two columns and we'll go in here and give it maybe 60 pixels a gap in between them. We're gonna have one set of posts here and another over here. So this gets us set up in the right place. So really the only magical step to doing this, it's not magical at all, is you just need multiple query loops on the page. So what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna start with a blank query loop and this is gonna be kind of our big featured one. So inside this query loop, in fact, I'll pop open the list view just so you can see where everything is. Inside here, we're gonna drop in an image. We'll scroll down to our dynamic data and we'll do the image source as featured image. Now you can see it's bringing several in here and that's because our query loop is defaulted to showing 10 posts per page. But in this example, we really just need one post. So when we do that, we can see here that now we're just querying one post. All right, beneath that, we wanna go ahead and add the date. So I'll just put a headline block in here. We'll change this to a paragraph. And I have some global styles that might get us fairly close. It's a pretty small headline, so we'll go with body extra small. And we're gonna scroll down to the dynamic data, and we're gonna change this to the post date. So now we see the post date in there. We can change the text transform, make it all uppercase and we probably wanna make it a little bit more visible. Like I said, we would probably scope these better if it was a real project, but for the purposes of this demo, I think that works okay. Now we need a little space here, so I'm gonna go back to this image, and I'm gonna give it maybe 16 pixels of bottom margin. Now underneath this, we need the big headline of the post, so an H2 will probably work in this circumstance. We have a big H1 that says the blog, we'll have H2 here. We can go ahead and set that text to white, We'll scroll down and enable the dynamic data and change the post content or the source content to title. So that will bring in the title of this post. Now for me, for these purposes, this font looks a little bit big inside of my theme. So I'm just gonna go ahead and change this locally here. I have some more global styles, maybe something like my H3 style is gonna work better. And I think that proportionately looks a little bit nicer. Underneath that, we'll add another headline block change it to paragraph. We'll change its text maybe to a light gray color. And in the dynamic data, we'll change the content source to excerpt. All right, we can see this excerpt is probably pretty long for our purposes and we don't want the read more link. So we can turn off the read more and maybe we go with something like 32 uh, characters for the excerpt length. I think something like this is looking pretty good. Maybe this has a little bit too much margin on it. 
Uh, I got 16 below the image, so I'm gonna put 16 below this date, and that evens things out pretty good. Now, lastly, we'll want to have some sort of link here. Just for the purposes of this demo, I'm gonna go ahead and just link the entire card here to make it easy. Now, there are some, we'll go here to dynamic data at link source, single post. That will link this entire card. Now, there are some accessibility issues with this. If we go into the link, this actually sets it as a hidden link. You can put an ARIA label in here, but you can't bring in the ARIA label dynamically, which is definitely a big limitation inside of Generate Blocks right now, because if we were able to query in the post title here into the ARIA label, this would solve our problems completely, but all we can do right now is put a static ARIA label in it. So this really isn't the solution for the best accessible option, but for the purposes of this demo, just to get a link in there, we'll go ahead and use it that way. So now we got our first query loop set up. Now we need to do our secondary one. So what I'm gonna do here is just start another query loop. We'll start blank. And this one was kind of a two column setup. So what I'm gonna do is use the grid block here. We'll just go with two columns. I'm gonna make this left column 33%, the right column 66%, and that should space those out nicely. In this left column, what I wanna actually do is use the background of this container as the featured image. And that way I can make them all stretch to the right size of whatever text is next to it, which we'll see here in a second. So I'm just gonna grab that container and go down to the dynamic data, turn that on, and the background image is gonna be the featured image. All right, and here inside this, we really need some of these same things. So I can actually just duplicate this drag it right on top of that box and it should dump it in there. Duplicate this heading, drag it right in there. Now this heading is gonna have to be quite a bit smaller. So I'm gonna go back up to my global styles. This might be something like my H5 and that, that looks pretty decent. Now you can see these images aren't coming in. Sometimes this glitches when you first put it in, but they are all there. All right, a couple things to clean up. Here inside of this grid that's showing my featured image and my text, I need a little bit of space between those. Maybe we'll do 20 pixels in between them. And I need this container to stretch the height of the whole thing here. So what I'm gonna do is go to this first container and I'm gonna go down to the sizing settings and I'm gonna make the size 100%. And I just type in the percent value there and it will go ahead and change the unit to percent. Now that we've done that, we can see all of these images in here. Now again, this is going ahead and defaulting to 10 posts per page. In the example I showed you, we only had three, so I'm gonna change that to three as well. So now you can see we have one query on the left, another query on the right, and they have completely different styles. Now, one problem we have here is it's querying this first post here and then querying it again over here. So to solve that, what we need to do is set up an offset on the second query loop. So I'm gonna grab the second query loop, the one on the right, and I'm gonna add a parameter. And this parameter is called offset, and we're gonna offset it by one post. And essentially what that's gonna do is it's just gonna take the first post in the loop and get rid of it inside this one. And it's gonna move the second one up and bring in the fourth one down here. So now we're not querying the same thing twice because we've offset the second query loop by one post. So that will definitely solve the problem for us there. And another little cleanup thing, we wanna put some gap in between these. So we did, uh, I don't know, maybe 40 looks pretty decent. Let's go ahead and take a look at this on the front end and we can wrap up with some of these additional changes and work on the responsive settings. So here you can see we have our big featured post on the left, our other post here on the right. We need to make sure to go and link those. I didn't link those here. And in the example, they actually had a divider line in between these, which is something we're gonna need to probably do with some CSS, uh, but we could probably knock that out as well. So let's go ahead and fix this link issue. Again, I'm just gonna go to the post template We'll go to the block settings, dynamic data, and we'll change the link source to single post. And that will get all of these linked here. Go ahead and update that. And now we need to think about how this is gonna work responsively. So if we go into tablet, I don't absolutely love how shrink down these are. So probably what I would do in this scenario is just grab this left container and make it 100% and grab this right container and make it 100%. So now these just stack on top of each other. Now in the editor, it looks like we have a gap here, but I know from experience that gap is gonna be gone once we go to the front end. So I just wanna grab this first container and make sure that there's some margin in between it and the next column. I'm gonna do that by just adding 40 pixels of bottom margin to this first container. Now when we go down to mobile, it should do the same. 
but you can see here we have these stacking and in the example they were actually next to each other. In fact, on the example, the columns were actually flip-flopped. The image was on the right and the text was on the left. So that's pretty easy to do. We can just go in here, we'll grab this left container with the image and we'll change the order to two and we'll go to this other one and change the order to one and that will flip-flop them here. And when we get down to mobile, we wanna keep them side by side. So what I'll probably do is go with, let's see, 33 for the image column and 66 for the text column. That's pretty scrunched. Maybe if we got rid of some of this gap, maybe 12 pixels a gap, that's a little bit better, but you can see some of these are still pretty tall. In fact, this text might be able to get away with being a little bit smaller. So maybe we'll go with something like 18 pixels. That looks a little bit better. I could probably live with that scenario. So we'll go ahead and update this refresh it on the front end again, and we'll do just a little bit of cleanup. One thing that I'm not loving as I kind of scrunch this browser in is the proportions of this image. It looks a little bit tall to me, and this is the proportions of this image are actually based off of the image that I uploaded. So in this case, it's fairly close to what I want, but if somebody uploaded a really vertical image into here, then it would take up a ton of vertical space. So I want to future proof that a bit. And I also want to put these borders in between these posts like we saw in the example. So to do those things, we're actually going to need to write a little bit of CSS. So what I'm going to do here is go back into the editor. I'm going to grab this image and I'm going to go ahead and give it a class. And what I'll do is call this featured post image. So since this is kind of our featured post here, this is the post image that I want to grab. And then I know on this right hand column, I'm going to want to grab all of these contents inside of this grid. So I'm going to go ahead and say secondary grid, secondary post grid, we'll call it that. Naming things is very hard. So I'm going to jump in here and jump into the customizer. We'll go into the additional CSS and I'll need to remember that what I call these things, easiest to copy and paste. So what we're going to do first is set up an aspect ratio for this image. So instead of it being whatever the image proportions are, we're gonna force it to be a specific aspect ratio. So to do that, we'll just do aspect hyphen ratio, and a good one to start off with is 16 by nine. And so that will force this image to be 16 by nine, no matter what size the image is. We can see our big headings getting in the way, but it's 16 by nine here, it's 16 by nine here, and it's 16 by nine here. And that way, if somebody uploads a very vertical image, it's still gonna crop it down to those same proportions. Now, as you can see, it's kind of scrunched our image here, but we can fix that by doing object fit and we'll do cover. And that way it will just fill in the space and crop off the image on the top and the bottom, which will make it keep the proportions of the image so it doesn't look scrunched. So that fixes us on that. But what we need next is kind of a border in between these posts. Now we could do this inside the UI by just giving each one of these cards a bottom border, but then we run into the issue of the last one has a bottom border and we don't want that. So I like to solve this with CSS. So what I'll do here is grab that selector I wrote, which was secondary post grid. I'm just gonna copy that back into the customizer and we'll paste that in. I need to put a dot before it. And just to show you here, we're gonna have to do something a little bit advanced, uh, but I'll try to walk you through all of it. Actually, what we want to target is not that grid itself, but the children inside of it. So I'm gonna do this to grab all the divs inside of it. We're gonna have to add something to that here in a second, but I just wanna show you kind of how this works. So for now, just to show you what I'm selecting, I'm gonna do an outline of one pixel solid red, and you can see all of these divs inside of this grid now have a red outline around them. But we, when we're writing this border, we actually don't want it to apply to the last one. So what we're gonna do in here is next to this div, we're gonna say not and then open parentheses and say last hyphen child. And now you can see once we did that, it's just giving this border to these first two items, but not the last one. And this is nice too, because if we decided we wanted four or five or just two, it's only gonna target what it needs to and not the last one. Of course, we don't want a red outline. What we actually want is a border bottom and we'll do one pixel solid and I have a variable set up here. So we'll do surface 80, which is going to be a nice gray color. Now you can see these borders are coming in in the right spots. They're just not positioned correctly. 
And when we do the gap on the grid, it's actually putting it after all this. So to fix that up, all we need to do is match up the padding on these first two cards to kind of match that gap. So what I'm gonna do is just say padding bottom, we'll say 40 pixels since that's what we had in our gap. And you can see now these cards have a 40 pixel bottom padding and then the gap in here. So this is nice and spaced out evenly. So we can go ahead and hit publish on that. We'll jump out of the customizer and take a look on the front end. So now as we scoot this browser in, we can see as it breaks to tablet, we get these stacked here. This is a little bit wide for my liking, but it's probably passable. And then as we get down here to more something that's like on mobile, everything looks actually pretty good, except for my heading up here. And of course we can fix that as well. We'll just go in here and change this by breakpoint. Maybe say on tablet, we wanted 150. That's still too big, 130. We're getting a little magic numbery, but the purpose of this wasn't necessarily the design. We're really just trying to figure out how to get multiple query loops on the same page. So we can update that. That should get us close enough. We'll refresh this and now as we scrunch this down, we see that all of these query loops work perfectly. And this is just such a great solution for making more of a magazine style layout and something with a little bit more visual interest. And it's really easy to do with the query loop block because we could drop in as many of these as we want to. Obviously we don't wanna drop in hundreds of them because that is gonna slow down our page but two or three of them on this page really isn't gonna have a big performance impact, especially compared to the design, the visual impact you get from something like this. It just looks so much nicer and so much more visually interesting. Now, one last thing I wanna show you is we did use the offset to bring in this first post and then number two, three, four, so we could kind of carry that in between the two query loops. But often what I like to do is just set up some kind of system where I can feature a specific post, even if it's not the latest post. So I've gone ahead and already set something up for us to do that. And what I'm gonna do is grab this first query loop here, the one on the left that we're calling kind of our featured post. And I'm gonna add a parameter. And for this, I'm gonna do a taxonomy and I'm gonna select the category. And I've set up some categories on all these posts and one here is feature. So basically I could give a post a category of feature and I know it's gonna show up in that featured spot, which is really great for being able to quickly be able to determine what goes in that spot instead of just the latest posts. Now, in some cases, the latest posts make sense, but if you have some really cornerstone content you always wanna show up in the spot, using a system like this might make it a little bit easier. Now, of course, we wanna probably show that, that most recent post up here, and we don't wanna duplicate and have that featured post over here if it is one of the more recent ones. So we need to go back to the second query loop. We can turn off the offset. It'll give us a little warning there. Now, in this case, we're not actually seeing the featured post over here, but I do wanna go ahead and make sure that we never do. So what I'll do is go here, instead of including a taxonomy, I'm gonna exclude it, and I'm gonna exclude the featured category. Now, of course, we're not seeing any changes right here because we weren't having that problem, but that would keep us from having two of these posts the same inside of either one of these query loops. Hopefully now that you see how easy this is to do, you can incorporate this inside of some of your builds. I'd love to see what you're doing with Generate Press and Generate Blocks, so be sure to leave a comment below with a link. I'd love to go check it out. And if you're experiencing any kind of problems inside of Generate Press or Generate Blocks, looking to find some kind of solution, let me know about those two and maybe I can make some future content on it.